BackstageAccess.com, we're here at NAMM 2010, the last day, wrapping up with none other than Mike Inez from Allison Chains. Mike, how you doing, man? I am fantastic. A little tired and hoarse, but, you know, it's been a great experience. Uh, all kinds of shit. There's a gathering of tribes here. I've seen a ton of bands I haven't seen in years. You know, it's just amazing here. I love it. You know, get to meet fine people like you. We're here every year, and uh, you're here every year, so like, it just, do you see it getting better and better, or what's your take on the NAMM experience? I do. I, I like it. You know, it, it, uh, it seems like it's growing every year, if that's possible. You know, I mean, there's more uh, exciting, like, new companies coming up every year, you know, especially in digital world, you know, there's all kinds of... Uh, just uh, yeah, it's it's nice to see the technology unfold. You know, it's really really exciting for us. You know, I've been coming to these things probably 20 years now, and uh, it just gets funner every year. You know, what was uh, the biggest thing that you look forward to coming here? Is it like meeting the fans, pressing the flesh? Like, what do you look? What what's the most fun experience for you when you're here? Well, I'm I'm the guy in the band that's the people person, so I love this stuff. You know, I'm always. Yeah, <laughs> but the fun part for me is actually on Sunday when I'm done with all the work and stuff. Now I could go and, and shop for free gifts and try out new guitars. And yeah, there's not that many people here now, so I, I like Sundays the best here. To be honest, I like the mellow part of it. You know, it's always exciting though to come. Like I always come Thursday night, and then uh, of course you see a lot of your friends, and you know you start ramping it up as you go, and then pretty pretty, pretty much peaks out on Saturday night. You know, and I was with you last night, so uh, yeah, you know this. <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, it's just killer, man. I, I I love this vibe, you know. I, I I miss football though. That's a downside, you know. So you don't get to see a whole lot of football while we're here, but you know. Well, just so you know, uh, the Cowboys lost. Oh, good. You know, I I'm, I, I don't like the Cowboys, so that's good. <laughs> Uh, Black is Way of Blue was released last fall to, uh, I mean, overwhelmingly positive reviews. Uh, what was your take on that? I mean, are you guys really happy, obviously, with the record? Oh, yeah. We, we never expected it to, you know, we were just very blessed. We're very humble about the whole thing. And, uh, you know, it's our first album back. Very important without Lane, you know. It was really, uh, we took our time with it and just did really nice uh, uh, d developed, you know, we let it develop naturally as opposed to, and organically as opposed to just like, you know, getting a single real quick and putting it out there. We did, it just didn't feel right. If this didn't feel right, we would just call it right now, you know, so we very happy. We did 28 countries so far touring and uh, I got about a week off now and we start rehearsals again to, for a states tour now and they're talking South America and the Orient and back to Europe in the summer and so we're, we're basically going to play wherever uh, they want to hear us. We're going to be there, you know. <laughs> so come by and drink our beer. <laughs> how did, like, the decision of doing new material come about? Like, how did that, you know, come around? Well, initially, this got together from a, we came from a very good place. Uh, there was a tsunami that happened. And uh, so Sean, my drummer, uh, called me and Jerry up in L.A. and said, hey, fly up. Let's do a benefit concert. So we had different guys jamming with us, like Mark Lanigan and... Uh, you know, Maynard from Tool and, and uh, just all these guys and Ann Wilson from Heart came and we just did this cool concert in Seattle. So it started there with like, uh, you know, we, I think after that, that, that the offer came in for five club shows. So we did uh, San Francisco, L.A., Boston, Chicago, I think a New York show. And then from there I went to, do you want to go to Europe with Tool and Guns N' Roses and stuff and Metallica, you know, the big festival. So. Uh, we, we wanted to stay small, but I think the six gig in was like uh, 45,000 people in Portugal. <laughs> so it's like we were laughing. It's like, okay, this isn't small anymore. All of a sudden, it's huge. And so we did. Uh, I think the first tour was 26 countries. And you know, obviously, when you get like you know musicians together, they're going to jam and make new music. And you know, that, these are all big steps. We want you know, well thought out steps. You know, so you know, it's like, okay, do we want to do a new write? Okay, let's write and then sound, start sounding good. And okay, do we want to actually go in and um, you know, do a do a record? So we financed it ourselves. All these record labels wanted to sign us and. Uh, you know, we, we just wanted to be able to pull the plug whenever we wanted if it didn't feel right. You know, we got a wonderful new singer, William Duvall, and uh, plays a lot of guitar, so it was, it was a question of fitting him in and, and organically growing together as a band. And, and I don't care what anybody says, the only way you're going to be a tight band is if you're on the road together and living in that submarine and, and traveling around. And, you know, so there's a lot of growing pains, especially how do we fit together after so long apart, and then how do we fit together with a new, um, a new member and a new brother. And, uh, we just couldn't be happier and you know we got the Grammy nomination and uh, the shows are all sold out and we're just uh, it's just a, an amazing rocket ride for us right now you know it's it it's just amazing to us how did the writing process with William um, Duvall go you know obviously with Lane passing you know you have a new member you know how did that whole vibe come about well you know Jerry was always a, just a great writer you know I mean um, it's, it's just 
first of all, for me, that's the best part of this is that, like, you know, me and Sean and Jerry, after all these years, still enjoy each other's company and we, we like jamming together. And, um, you know, it, it's definitely some growing pains with the new guy, you know, and uh, I mean, Lane was just such an, you know, we, we never set out to replace Lane Staley. It's, he's irreplaceable, you know, so we just wanted to add to the legacy as opposed to try to copy the past, you know. So this is a very important record for us to say goodbye to our brother, you know. So it's uh, part of the healing process. It's actually part of the creative process of this, you know. So th this album really helped us out personally get over that, you know. It's really uh, amazing. He's greatly missed, you know. And, uh, I, all around the SNAM show, you could just uh, see the influence of Lane's voice. I mean, so many singers and bands here that just uh, really, n not try to copy him, but he just influenced so many people, you know. It's just, uh, just uh, mind-blowing for me to watch, you know. <laughs>